Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. and today I'm reviewing Earth from Inside Up Games. Earth is a 1-4 to four player tableau building game which players are going to be building out the tableau by gathering cards, placing them down into their grid, and trying to get as many points as possible through the cards themselves, through the things they'll place on the cards, through the various scoring goals we'll talk about as well, trying to do so as efficiently as possible and, well, have the most points in this like 200 plus point engine, build engine building game. That's the basic high level overview. The general idea as far as what goes is in Earth what you'll be doing is players will be taking an action and every single turn they'll take an action that will reward them and reward others. All these actions are designed around, well, getting points in a variety of ways, usually with the basis being getting cards into your grid, and then augmenting the points and improving the points from there. To that end, the actions you can take, and I'll just go through these one at a, one at a time, the actions you can take over here, this action over here is going to allow you to place down two cards into your tableau, and then draw four cards and keep one. Other players, when you take this action, will be able to either place a card or draw a card. In general, that's the sequence as you play through Earth. You take an action, you, defi you define what the action is, but then other players will get a weaker version of that action, and then all players will go ahead and activate their green abilities in their tableau and their player board. The next action is going to give you five dirt, and you can go ahead and compost two cards to your compost pile, but additionally, you know, the other players are going to be either get two grid or compost two cards, and then you'll activate all orange abilities as well as all multicolor abilities. There are going to be a lot of multicolor abilities in play, and you'll activate those whenever you activate any one of these other colors, not the green, but any of these other action spots over here. Mark the actions as you go with whatever token you want, but past that, you're going to be doing that to get dirt. Dirt is going to be the main way you pay for the various cards. You can see here, cards have a dirt cost, which is going to be how you get them into play. That's the second action in the game. The third action is going to have you getting these cubes over here. You're going to take six of these little green cubes, and you're going to put them onto cards that can hold them. These cards, for example, have holding spots on them. You can see many of these cards have them, but not all of them do. You're going to put six of those cubes out, and each of those cubes is worth a point. So I just took a seven-point card, and I made it worth 13 points instead, which is, well, good, because points are good. That's how you win the game. You'll also go ahead and take two dirt when you take that action. Other players will take two of those cubes or two dirt, one or the other, and then everyone will activate all of those abilities. The last spot is how you get card draw. Yes, you get a little bit of card draw here, but you get the most of your card draw from this spot over here, where you can draw four cards and then build two on spots that can have them. Again, this spot does not have over here, but there's going to be other spots over here where I can take two of these little things and put them onto this spot, this particular spot can hold up to four of these, and if I have all four, it's going to be worth six points, otherwise it's worth a point apiece. I took that seven-point card, I made it worth 13, and now I made it worth 15 points, and possibly getting higher as I stack more. If I put another two in there, I'll put a little cap on it as well, and when I do that, we're going to go to six plus seven plus six for a total of 19 points for that card that started off as seven points. Other players will draw two cards, or place two of those things, and then everyone activates those abilities. Those are the core actions you take in the game. Playing cards, gathering the resources you need to play cards, gathering the various little green cubes you'll be placing down onto your cards, or building those little tree structures onto your cards, all designed to get as many points as possible. That's the high level of what you're doing. As far as the why of what you're doing, the why comes down to the ways you're going to get points in this game, because there are a variety of ways you get points. Game end will be triggered once the full tableau is complete, when, the full, when this tableau is completely done by any player, that player will get 7 points and trigger end game. but you're trying to figure out the way to get as many points as possible as you go through that, which can be a combination of the actual points on the cards themselves, the various indicators, these things on the cards, each of those worth a point, these, each of these worth a point or possibly bonus points if you finish the structure. Then you're going to have goals, both personal and private. Over here, we're going to have a bunch of goals. These four goals are kind of a first come, first serve. Each of these have different rest restrictions or criteria on them. This card wants nine flora, each with plus one of those cubes in them. But once you do so, you'll take one of these markers over here, and if you're the first person to do so, you'll get 15 points. Second player will get 11, then 8, then 6, then 5, meaning you're incentivized to go for these cards sooner rather than later, each of these giving you specific things that they want you to have accomplished in order to score the points for them. On the side over here, we're going to get different kinds of points. These aren't first come, first serve. Rather, these will give you points. For example, seven points for every two floor, each with six of that over there. But you're going to have specific cards that give you specific abilities based on having sets of things. So these won't give you first come, first serve. Rather, they'll give you incremental multiple multipliers based on how much you did of a certain thing. And you also have one of those in your own tableau. Players will start with their own one of these as well. So in addition to the public ones, they'll have their own private goal they're going for. Past that, the cards in your compost are going to be worth a point each. Many of the events you play will possibly remove points because they're going to have various effects that they're doing. And then some of the cards as well may have various point abilities on them as well in the ability section. That's what you're doing. 
you're playing cards, you're trying to play cards that fit certain criteria, you're trying to play cards that will play well off of each other, that will give you a tableau of abilities that you can activate most efficiently both on your turn and on others' turns, and you're trying to fill out your grid as fast as possible, or as best as possible. Fast is what, seven points, because if you're the first one there, but it doesn't, that's, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the best move to do, it's just worth an extra seven points, but if you can get more points than other things, oh, and then there's these cards, my personal favorite cards in the game, almost forgot to tell you about these, these cards over here are going to be cards that give you chunks of points for various things that happen on your grid. So you're going to be trying to get those cards, which will give you in-game scoring for specific, just like as you draft these cards in the game, as you gather cards, whenever you see these over here, they can give you chunks of points, 13, 9, 14, 11 points for achieving, achieving certain things. So rather than having a simple, like, you know, four points, they'll be going ahead, I don't know why I said points over there, I just counted the cost of the cards, I apologize. That's the cost. You're going to get points down here on the bottom for based on how well you, you achieve certain criteria. And that is Earth. You'll be playing with this giant stack full of cards, all with tons of abilities. There's going to be events, there's going to be abilities, there's going to be point scoring cards, there's going to be the flora, just a ton of things you'll be placing out here. You do all, you go through that whole sequence, take an action, that one takes a weaker action, build out your tableau, until eventually endgame is triggered, and that's how you play the game. Which brings us to the review, starting off with ease of play. The game is fairly easy to teach and play. Like I said, it really comes down to those four actions. You take four different actions, each of them has their own benefit to yourself and to others, each of them activates abilities. Once you explain the four actions everything else comes down to the card play this is a game that you can get people up and running in generally 10 minutes or less uh the, in teaching the game the rules themselves not that long either as far as game time does range, I would say most of our games have been knocked out in generally in the hour or under range. Maybe the first game was a little slower, I don't know, it's been a while, but this is a game that moves pretty quickly. Assuming you're playing it with people who are moving, and I, I will say I have not played a five player game, that might slow things down, but since you're taking a, some simultaneous turns to a degree, one player takes an action, everyone benefits, even at a higher player count, it's not going to see that much of a slowdown, but it's generally a game that I think you can knock out in an hour. The box says 45 to 90 minutes, I think that 90 is pushing it. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, starting off with what I like, which is the tableau building. In this game, inherently, you're building a tableau. You're building out a sequence of abilities that will all play off well with, with each other. You're trying to get those things in place so that as you take different actions, you're prioritizing yourself and your engine based on how you built out that engine. So you get more as this game goes on. You get more powerful, get more stuff done. The actions you take just become progressively more powerful. Combined with the fact that you're getting stuff on other players' turns makes it rewarding to, well, get stuff on other players' turns. You get extra things. You always have have things happening to you in this game. At lower player counts, you'll have more control over how frequently you're choosing the action. At higher player counts, you'll have less control. But no matter what you do, you're always having things thrown your way, and there's a ton of ways to build out that engine. There's a ton of things you can focus on as far as the different things you're trying to go for. Whether you focus on the various scoring goals than being there first on these cards, whether you focus on your own private goals, or just the ones that give you more points, not necessarily first, whether you build a lot of these cards, which, like I said already, my personal favorite, or whether you just try to build a bunch of cards that all reward, sometimes being mindful of things in rows and columns. Very often, the reason you have a grid over here, a tableau, very often things in the game reward you for having other things in rows or columns, so if you build efficiently, you can get extra bonuses along the way. You can get some really strong point scoring cards that will really direct your entire game based on getting a chunk of points. If you sit there and get them, five points for every diagonal adjacent to the strain, that could be a chunk of points. That could be 20 points for that card if you do it well, and so you want to factor that in because some of these cards come baked in with points as well, so you're trying to be mindful of all the different ways you're going to score points in this game because they can add up very quickly, and you're trying to think through how they will all direct what you play. And then the goals as well. The goals will also direct you. And you're trying to combine all of these. You're trying to comp those cards when you don't need them. You're trying to play the events that you think will serve you the most. Although I will say, which I guess brings us to what I don't like. Let's move into from there what I don't like about the game. First of all, the events, I just don't find the events overly compelling. They're nice. You get to play them quickly and easily. So it's like, a, it's an easier thing to play, but I don't love the events in this game. Not so much an issue of take that. I just felt that they felt a little out of whack with the rest of the engine, and I'd say the other thing I don't particularly love, and this is a problem I've had with some other games in the past as well, is I don't find the cards stand out to me. They matter, especially some of the other ones, some of the larger ones that give you large chunks of points, they absolutely matter, but I don't find the cards feel particularly compelling in and of themselves. The engine that I'm building, that works for me. The engine that I'm building, yes, I enjoy it, I have a, I, I enjoy getting the cards out, I enjoy trying to take actions that will drive a, ch a, a, a chunk of resources my way so I can power my next through card plays. I like what I'm doing in this game, but at no point do I feel particularly attached to any particular card. This is a relevant thing because this game will be compared to games like Wingspan, to Terraforming Mars, and to other things like that. When I'm playing a game like Terraforming Mars, the cards feel so impactful and so cool, and when I'm playing Earth, the sum of the parts adds up, the individual cards never really stand out for me. 
As far as I can see, others not liking, first of all, this is a low interaction game. Past the events, there's minimal things going on. Yes, you get things in other players' turns, but it doesn't feel like there's a high degree of interaction. It feels incidental by nature. So this is primarily plays and feels like a multiplayer solitaire game where, yes, others do matter, and you're vying for goals, but it mostly feels like you're doing your own thing. If that's not your jam, that's not your jam. And secondly, I'd say that a lot of things in the game come down to the math of what's going to math out to give you more points. It comes down to, hey, sitting so they're saying, okay, well, if I play this card, I can get six extra points in this card. If I do this over here, I can get a bunch of extra these. These Many things in the game, from compost to the cubes you put on cards to the trees you put on cards, they all come down to one point here, one point there, one point, like literally, they're all one point things. And you just have to math out what's going to be the sum of the most one point things that can get you to where you need to go. So a lot of turns come down to ultimately, this is what I'm trying to do. Let me just math out what the most efficient play is. I generally don't mind that that much. I kind of wish there, I, I like the general puzzle of trying to think through what will get me the most points. I will say I don't personally love that so many things in the game are just like piles of things are just one point for everything. You get a point and you get a point and it's all just one point for a bunch of things. As far as final thoughts on Earth, I overall very much like this game. I like the game... Whenever I play through Earth, I enjoy what I'm building. I enjoy the process of what I'm building out. And I like the general tableau building. I like the, the variable goals. There are multiple things in this game that I really do enjoy quite a bit. The, some, the main aspect that I kind of have, a, the, main, the only real aspect that really holds me back is I don't feel overly attached to the individual cards that I'm playing through, which I don't think is necessarily an issue in and of itself. It's only more so an issue because of the games I'm mentally comparing it to as I play. I can't help but evaluate this against other tableau building games that I particularly resonate with or enjoy playing. And to me, Earth, I love what it's doing. I love the game. I love the overall sense of goals and the way everything ties together. I love the speed at which it plays and the simplicity at which it plays while giving you a solid tableau building engine while also lacking some of the things that do stand out in other games for me. Overall, this one, this is one that I still do really enjoy and recommend. It's a solid four out of five. As far as those other game recommendations I mentioned, first of all, Terraforming Mars. Uh, if you know me, if you know my channel, you know I love Terraforming Mars, and for better or for worse, that means that other tableau building games do get compared against it, and I, I still find Terraforming Mars my personal favorite. Then from there, there's also Everdell and Wingspan, which I think this game does give me strong vibes in those games as well, which I, I think Wingspan in particular, this game reminds me of as well, because everything works, and it gives you a really solid engine that you're building through, but then also the cards themselves never particularly stood out to me in that game either. But anyways, those are going to be recommendations. Avidel, Avidel, Wingspan, and Terraform Mars, if you're looking for other game recommendations that hit some of those same vibes that Earth does. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.